Hi y'all, uh, my name is Moile Dimutapo and I am the lead trainer at CIFA and Tumiamini uh, Transport and Education Training. So we have started a program for freight logistics, transport economics and transport operations where we are offering online um, lessons for the three subjects within transport and logistics and CV at TVET colleges. So let's start with our first lesson in freight logistics, which is derived from topic one of your subject assessment guidelines, which is the introduction to freight logistics. I hope you enjoy this lesson as much as I will learning outcome, which is key concepts and fundamental principles of freight logistics. So now, uh, just to give you a brief, brief background on what transport and logistics is. Transport and logistics is a very exciting uh, field of study. Remember, uh, as I often say, that without transport, we do not have an economy. We do not have a well-functional economy because within the fourth industrial revolution that we are in, everything, um, yes, everything relies on transport to move from the consumer, I mean from the producer to the consumer, be it raw materials, be it the finished goods, be it the 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 goods that have been consumed by the customer and need to be disposed of in some instance or or another they need to be transported so now in freight logistics we so what is freight logistics okay so in the simplest term i would say that freight logistics is the study of movement of goods right from the raw material producer all the way to the end user right in in some instances we will also consider goods moving from the end user to the producer because of something that we call reverse logistics but we will discuss reverse logistics in more detail later in the syllabus Okay, so freight logistics may also be said to be the, uh, the controlling of cost effective uh, operations and the movement of cargo. So it combines logistics operational experience, human resource utilization and knowledge to ensure the smooth movement of goods between transporters and clients or customers. So now let's look at this definition quickly. The first part I want us to look at the controlling of cost effective operations. Now in freight logistics, we always make sure that our goods get to the customer on time in the right condition at the right place when as and when required imagine you have goods that need to be delivered to you let's say you're going to a wedding and you order a dress on uh, on online from one of your favorite retailers you order a dress uh, a month in advance because you know that no my dress is going to be delivered on time so now the company will give you what is called an estimated time or date of delivery sometimes they'll abbreviate it to be called an etd or an eta right and then they'll say to you that if you order on let's say the first of february right your wedding that you are attending is on the 24th of february and you're telling yourself that no i've got enough time because normally they take a week or two to de deliver but then they have issues at their warehouse or at their depots where you find that they end up being unable to deliver your dress but the problem is they have not informed you then you will be frustrated and end up deciding that 
that you will never order from them again. But then you will still be having a problem of saying, I've got this dress that needs to be delivered to me and I don't have a dress to wear for the wedding. Right. So you have a crisis. Right. So now we in, in transport, in, in freight logistics, we make sure that your goods arrive, arrive when you need it, as you need it, so that you can utilize it as and when required. Right. But another thing is ensuring cost efficiency. So we make sure that as we are moving the goods to you as our customer, we also make profit, right? So we don't waste resources, number one. Number two, we make sure that as we are not wasting resources, meaning the people that we are appointing or hiring to do the job need to do the job how it, in the correct manner, Meaning, aligning, ensuring that goods going to a particular area are transported together, if possible, are transported together so that we save on fuel, we save on the, uh, uh, the amount of drivers that need to go into that particular area. That is us looking at human resource utilization and also considering that the people uh, who are office based are able to do the job and support the driver that's transporting the goods to the end user, right? or to the producer of the goods if we're talking about raw material. And then ensuring that, let's look at ensuring uh, that a smooth movement of goods is done between, I think we've already discussed that one, where we look at when the driver is in transit, they receive the appropriate support that is required. So now in freight logistics, we do not look at transporting people. People are, fall under transport economics where we talk about uh, passenger transport. So here we do not look at passenger transport, we look at the movement of your correct goods. Now let's look at key concepts of freight logistics. These are terminologies that you're going to need to know for you to successfully complete level two of freight logistics. The first one is freight logistics and we describe, we discussed it in the previous slide or slide number three. So the second one we'll be looking at is supply chain. So a supply chain is a network of people or and things that are involved in producing and delivering a product from the place where it is made to the person who is going to buy it, right? So in supply chain, let's say for the sake of this lesson, we are looking at conflicts, right? So Kellogg's conflicts. So Kellogg's will go to farmers, right? And then to, from these farmers, they'll say, we need corn that we're going to use to produce our conflicts. And we are developing a trade or an MOU, a trade understanding or memorandum of understanding between the farmer and us as conflicts. And then what we will do is we will then have a, a requirement from uh, the farmer to say we need let's say per year or per month or per week or per day we need this much amount of of our corn so that we can produce our conflicts then we will go to the farmer and we will procure or buy the corn and then we bring it to our factory to produce conflicts and then after that we will either package the conflicts ourselves or we will find another company to do the packaging 
for the conflicts for us. Let's say for this purpose, we package ourselves. Then we will package the conflicts and then put them in our warehouses or our storages. Then we will wait for retailers to make orders for our conflicts and then we will either deliver to them or they will send trucks to us to collect the conflicts depending on our trade agreement and then the goods will go to the retailers and at the retailers we will and uh, they will have the, the customers come in to buy the, the conflicts or we will buy online, right? So when we're buying online, you will see that um, you will have a page that you go into and then you buy your conflicts and they are delivered to you. That is the supply chain uh uh, 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 process. Then we have the supply principle. So when we're talking about the supply principle, we're talking about the fundamental principle of uh, economic uh, theory that describes the total amount of a specific good provided to the market for consumption. So in the supply principle, we are looking at how much the supplier of the particular product is able to produce and give or, or sell to its customers, right? And then normally when we talk about supply, we'll also talk about the demand principle. So the demand principle is a quantity of a particular product or service that consumers are willing to purchase at a particular price. So now, normally, a supplier will be able to produce a particular amount of goods depending on the demand of the 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 the. Um, the end user. Now there comes a time where supply will either will either exceed the demand. So if you've got too much supply of a particular product, it forces the price to go down. But if the demand is too high or higher than the supply, we will control the demand by taking up the price so more and more people or less people are able to, to um, or less people are able to um, purchase the particular product. Then we have the term transport. So transport, uh, is a system of moving or means of moving people of and, and goods from one place to another using either a vehicle, an aircraft, a train, a ship, or by even what is called non-motorized transport, which is by walking or by a bicycle or using a bicycle or by using a horse or other ways of moving goods. Then we have logistics, which is the, the process of transporting, storing of goods and or inventory, information management for an organization. So when we're looking at logistics, we're, tr we're talking about transporting of goods. Number two, we're talking about the storing of those goods. And then number three, we're talking about um, proper utilization of, of, of inventory. Remember when we're talking about inventory, we're talking about both uh, the, the equipment that we need for our day-to-day -day operations and the goods that we are selling to our customer. Then we also look at information management. In, imagine you're running a warehouse and as you're ras running the warehouse, you have this big, big warehouse and you are storing different things for different people 
or even you are storing different things for your own organization. Let us go back to, to our example of, of Kellogg's. Remember the organization Kellogg's does not only produce conflicts. They have different types of cereal that they make and have recently gone into the market of noodles. Imagine getting into that warehouse and you're looking for noodles and it's so big and you don't know where it is, right? So now we in logistics we ensure that information is managed properly there's systems that are put in place that will tell you where goods are when you need them then your pickers and your packers your pickers and your kitters will not be confused as to where to find things they will be able to drive to where the the computer will they will check on the computer and the computer will tell them that no, the noodles that you're looking for are in uh, aisle B10 uh, and on, on level 4, for example. And information, when we're looking at information management, you will have a situation where you will be able to know when your goods are expiring. Because if you do not know when your goods are expiring, then you will not be able to manage your inventory properly and you will have a lot of stock losses. You, stock losses. you will lose goods, you, goods will get lost, goods will expire while sitting in the warehouse and so forth and so on and that will cost you a lot of money and end up with your business going with you going out of business and then we have this this thing called logistics outsourcing if you remember earlier we were talking about how there's some components of your organization that you'll be able to to give to other companies to perform for you. And I think we were referring to packaging. So things like packaging, transport, uh, um, human resource, IT, to name just, a, just but a few, you are able to outsource to other companies so that you can focus on the core function of your organization. So now, here, I've said to you that logistics um, outsourcing entails using third-party uh, logistics or 3PL companies um, to do the work that you would otherwise do, but due to the interest of your organization, have focused on other things. So, for example, you would look at, okay, here I am, I am producing um, or oh, I am the company called Kellogg's. I am not promoting the company Kellogg's. I do not even work for them. I'm just giving that as an example. Please bear with me because I thought it was the easiest example to give. So now here you are. You are Kellogg's and you realize that my core function is to produce breakfast cereal, right? Or to produce uh, yeah, breakfast cereal. Then you decide that no, with me having trucks in house is costing me a lot of time. Then you decide that you will look for a logistics company or a 3PL which will package for you and transport for you. Then you focus on producing the best quality. Um, cereal that you can. The next one is warehousing. So warehousing is buying uh, goods from a manufacturer and storing them in warehouses uh, prior to a order fulfillment. So sometimes you buy goods and then you keep them in the in your store and when you've got an order you know that you don't have to now go out and look for the goods but you have them in-house and you are able to cater for your customers needs 
faster. So the concept of warehousing is done so that you are able to cater to the needs of your customers as efficiently as possible so that your customers don't end up going to another producer. Then we've got a concept called material handling equipment. It's all the, the tools uh, like your forklifts, your cranes, your conveyor belts and so forth that you need within your warehouse so that you can efficiently move goods from point A to point B. This helps you to be able to cater to the needs of your customers faster, making you more efficient in the work that you do. The next concept that we have is packaging. So it's all materials used to protect goods or the, pro or the process of ensuring that goods are protected while providing information for the user. Most of the time, which I know we don't do, you find that um, when you look at particular goods that you buy, you can get information outside of the, the good or the product, let's say conflicts, it will give you information on the product itself, what was used to make the product, what uh, uh, ingredients are in the product, for information's sake, in case there's certain ingredients that they used that you are allergic to. You'll find that in most um, goods, they'll give you uh, nutritional information, but also that particular packaging that gives you nutritional information about the product will also show you how to use the product for best, how to, to utilize the product, yes, and they'll also teach you or show you how to handle that particular product. It also protects the goods from damage. You'll see with our conflicts, we have the first layer, which is usually a plastic bag which is sealed that provides no information and then you'll have the box that's outside that provides the nutritional information right and then you'll have that is called primary packaging that protects the product then you'll have let's say a box of six pack uh, or a bigger box with multiple conf uh, multiple conflicts um, of multiple boxes of conflicts inside, which helps us to better maneuver or move around the boxes. And then sometimes, in other times, you'll have those uh, secondary packaging, which is um, the multiple uh, conflicts in a bigger box, and then they will be tertiary packaging will be when they are grouped together and wrapped with a cling wrap so that they are able to be moved onto the truck efficiently. So tertiary packaging helps us with um, transporting the goods. Then we've got a concept uh, which is profit. Profit is the money that a company is left with after all the expenses of the organization are paid, right? And then we've got, uh, when we're looking at that, we're, we're talking about operational costs. We're talking about uh, um, operational, when we're looking at operational costs, we're talking about uh, the goods that you're purchasing in order for you to sell. We're talking about the rent, the telephones. We're talking about all the things that you need in order to operate your customer salaries and so forth and so on and wages and so forth and so on maintenance and so forth and so on and then we have cost and um, which is the price of a particular thing so how much it costs for you to to produce a particular thing or the cost of purchasing a particular product okay so we have frequently used um 
acronyms within the transport and logistics industry. The first one is FIFO, first in, first out. It explains, um, or, or this principle is used in logistics to avoid goods getting spoiled in the warehouse or in the store. So often you'll find in retail stores, they'll take out the old stock that came first and set it aside pack the new stock and then put in the new stock in front. This principle is used to avoid goods getting spoiled within the store or within the warehouse. So what we will do is the ones, the goods with the expiry date being the closest will be put in front or will be delivered to the customers first before the newer stock or the stock with the with the older expiring date and uh, gets delivered or gets packed i hope that makes sense and then the second term that we have is inco terms inco terms is a very interesting term which is used to show us where the point of where point of liability exchanges hands so now when we are transporting goods or when goods are in transit uh, we according to the memorandum of understanding or the trade agreement between me as the supplier and my customer we outline where liability swaps hands sometimes they'll say that the common carrier transport is the one which carries the liability from the point of um from the point where the goods are collected to to the point where they are delivered but it's not always the case you find that because of the agreement that i have with my client there is a time where the liability moves from me to me as the supplier to my customer you find that my customer is the one who's collecting the goods from me and then will be the one who carries the goods but you find there's a time where i will transport the goods but will not carry the liability of goods should they get damaged in transit right the next term that we have or the next acronym that we have is TITA which is transport education and training authority so now this uh, organization is responsible for ensuring training within or, or education within the transport environment so what they do is they provide funding to different organizations to provide training within the transport and logistics environment right and then the next one these this these are just to name but a few we also have another one which is not listed here which is called LIFO LIFO means that uh, last in first out this one is often used when talking or referring to human resources right in any industry when the first person to get appointed or to get hired in an organization is the last to leave so the last one which was hired is the first to leave and leave for is always or often used to refer or used when dealing with with um when dealing with a uh, Cust with not customers but when dealing with with human resources right but you cannot use it when dealing with goods because you will have a lot of problems and end up losing business the next um, outcome that we're looking at is relating freight logistics to integrated supply chain. So now within the supply chain environment, uh, what are we moving? Number one, we're moving goods. Where are we moving them to? We're moving them to the end user. Why are we, why are we moving them to the end user? Because they, uh, they have purchased the goods 
and they have a demand for our goods. If we do not deliver our goods on time, they will always find a replacement for us, right? So now here we have a nice, um, a nice uh, supply chain process there, which I have gotten from uh, Blot.com, uh, and it 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 it's a nice uh, supply chain flowchart, which shows the the way in which goods move from the raw material producer all the way to the end user. So supply chain management, as per um, your learner guide uh, for level two from Macmillan, um, states that uh, supply chain management is a network of interconnected activities that are involved in the uh, provision of products and services, right? And then freight logistics has a variety of processes that make up the entire inter integrated supply chain. Uh, and they may include number one, uh, number one, which is packaging, number two, uh, which is warehousing, inventory control, information management, uh, material handling, uh, loading and transporting. Also looking at how safely goods are transported. This marks the end of our first lesson. I hope you enjoyed this lesson with me and hope you will attend more of my lessons. Um, have a lovely day further.